But if you came out with the Q5, I thought, well, they, it just was around the time that Sony had made available the uh, LDAC Bluetooth available to other manufacturers. And I thought, well, that's, they're going to have to update the Q5 to allow for that. And it was kind of almost falling behind in features. Well, not plenty of features, but kind of falling behind in the Bluetooth aspect. Although it kind of it doesn't really matter with uh, the, the kind of level of sound quality you get for $350. Not surprisingly, well, it's come the Mark II or Q5S as it seems to be listed here. So it just arrived literally minutes ago. And my confused father-in-law uh, was uh, trying to work out how to deal with the courier who insists who needed a date and signature. So how nice. Well, it's not shiny box, it's shock box, it's black. As always, we have a quick guide, which is handy in Chinese and English, which is handy because the, the Q5 itself could be a little bit confusing to use. I asked, before anyone asked me, I did ask for the THX module and they didn't have any left. But still, I, I don't think it'll make a dramatic amount of difference compared to the, uh, the one that comes on here, which is the new balanced version of what's the AM3 D, if I recall, AM3E, sorry, I've got it wrong. D. We're up to E already. So that uses the, I've got on here an AM2, I'm just on here, but it adds a, the dual balance setup that we had on the M11. My M11's in the car at the moment, so. But interesting, oh, that's interesting. The module has the USB slightly to one side. Okay, so if you need, if you need a dock, I was asking about docks, and if you need to dock it with something, well, that's gonna be a bit tr troublesome. Um, we have a few design changes, it looks like. The power button and input now, it shows which input is being used, not just the DSD indicator as before. And that's handy because it was kind of confusing. So you want to confirm that uh, the DSD, which input was being used. On the other side, well, we don't have, now no longer an extra USB, in, USB input for charging. It seems to charge off the same one. I don't know how it's gonna work in the software. I'll have to find out because you used to be able to switch the ports. Now you only have one port. So if you're using it with an iDevice, I guess it may automatically not try and, uh, or may charge, it may work differently using it with a smartphone too. On the top, oh, well we've lost some of our fanciness around the ports, it's become a bit simpler. This, I'd swear this feels lighter. This feels heavier. That seems to have lost some weight. I'm gonna measure these up and find out what's going on there. But otherwise, fairly similar. Apparently now this, the power is now handled by this switch sensibly rather than have a power button. So this is actually input control, not power. That was it. In the box, screwdriver, screws, quick start guide, case, cheap case, the usual um, iDevice cable, which only works and works with FIO staff, rubber bands, that's the same as I've already had, I think. I think it's all identical to what I had before. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is maybe a, just a 3.5 to 3.5, that's new. Usual coax adapter, if you're not already familiar, it uses a weird pinout for the coax. You have to have a custom cable made, and I made my own custom cables. For that, micro USB and something else. Oh, optical adapter. So that's all that was in the box. And now to uh, weigh it, and get it running and uh, have a listen and if it's, see if it's improved in sound versus the uh, original. <laughs> 